Hey guys, welcome back to another fun fall video. Today's video is a mega video, which means it's extra long. I have pulled together some of my favorite fall DIYs from past years. None are from this year, so they're ones you have not seen at all or have not seen in a while. And I put them together for one long fall inspiration video for you to watch while you decorate, craft, or just lounge around some, sipping some tea whatever you want to do, but I hope that you enjoy them. And I wanted to mention that in case you keep hearing me say first DIY, last DIY, and it doesn't quite make sense with the line of the video. So I just wanted to put that out there, but I hope that you enjoy it. Let's get started. All right, so for this first one, I finally found one of these cute little cutting board signs from the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna make it over. We're gonna use the back side. I do think I wanna do um, a double-sided one. So if you don't want to, you can just cover the back side with some paper, like some craft paper. I'm peeling off some that was just kind of creeping over the edges. Um, I ended up leaving it as is on the back because I'm gonna go back and probably redo it for Christmas, I'm thinking, but I didn't have time when I was doing these DIYs to come up with a creative thought for Christmas. So we're gonna just use the back and I'm going to paint this with some Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I'm just going to give a pretty good coat but um, leaving some of the edges a little bit rough and then we're going to go in and um, sand it down. I'm just going to sand down the edges and just smooth out the surface of it and then I'm going to just take my ruler and make some lines with my pencil to kind of give the wood look and then I just smudge those pencil lines with my finger. It's that easy and um, you can see it just gets just gets the lead on your hand, but um, that's all there is to it. And then I'm gonna use this stencil that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. It's a really, really great price. It was $1.99, you got two stencils, plus our stuff is already 40% off, so it was just over a dollar. Also, if you wanna see some things that I picked up that I'm gonna be using, if you wanna be looking for them, I did share a Dollar Tree haul and there was some Hobby Lobby stuff in that. I will link that video for you. Just if you want a heads up of some things that maybe you want to be on the lookout for. But anyways, we're just going to use this pumpkin stencil and I'm just using a stencil brush with a little bit of paint. Try not to go too heavy so you don't have any bleed through. I did get a little bit of it, but not too bad. And then I just took some antique wax and did the stem. There was a little bit of bleed through on the bottom that I could have gone back and touched up, but honestly, it didn't bother me. And then I'm going to take these, um, one of these word sets from Dollar Tree. This came in a six pack. I know they've had in previous years, but this year was the first time I saw them. And I'm just taking a little paintbrush and painting them with some black acrylic paint. I'm just trying to be careful to not make a mess so that there's not like, you know, gobs of paint hanging over the edge. So that's why I went in with a little paintbrush. And then once that was dry, we're just going to use a little bit of hot glue and hot glue that to the center of the pumpkin. And then I had forgot or I thought I was recording, but it wasn't. We're just going to wrap the handle with some jute twine. I have this like tan and white combo from the Dollar Tree. And when I got to where the little hole opening was, I'm just kind of threading it through there and using a little bit of hot glue on the back. And when I redo the back side, I will either work around what's on the handle or I'll just cut off the twine, do the back side, and then redo something on the handle. I, I wasn't too super worried about it. Um, so yeah, we're just going to secure that down and I wanted to put another um, decal on the front, but then I just kind of like the way it looked. Oh yeah, using a lighter to burn off some fuzzy hairs on the twine. But I did still want one extra detail, so I got these cute little bows, raffia bows with like a button center from the dollar or from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to hot glue one of those on towards the top. And that is it for this one. I will definitely be using this in my kitchen and I thought it came out really cute and was easy to do. For this next DIY, I've got this wood pumpkin piece from Dollar Tree and some antique wax that I am just kind of watering it down. I'm just making sure that my paintbrush is um, damp so I keep dipping it in water and dabbing some of the water off. Um, when you use antique wax, you can use it straight up as is, but if you want it, um, mess around with it a little bit if you water it down if you want to wipe it off like I am here depending on how long you let it sit before you wipe it off you can get different shades of that antique wax and so that's just what I was doing here but I'm going to stain this whole thing and this little wood, wood pumpkin piece I actually picked this up last year it was still in my stash but they are out this year and I've seen some extra or different 
shapes that I hadn't seen in the past. And I've actually seen them like all year round and not just for fall. Um, so just a really fun piece. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. And I thought, you know what? Not everything has to be super done up. So we're gonna keep it pretty simple and just stain this whole thing inside, outside, front, back, all of the spaces with this antique wax, just wiping it on, uh, brushing it on and wiping it off. You can also use a baby wipe for this too. That works really handy, but didn't have them nearby on this day. So this is what I did. Also, I feel like the lighting keeps changing, but that's because I filmed um, these at over two different days. Not because they took a long time to do, but that's just the time I had available. So the lighting is not the same throughout. Um, and then we're going to take some more of that jute, jute twine from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just wrapping that around the stem of the part that I'm going to be using as the front. And I even did it across the top by just running a little bit of hot glue across the very top of it. Sorry, that's out of frame, but you can see there. And then again, use my lighter to clean up the little fuzzies. And then I'm going to use this berry garland that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. They have it in different colors. They also have this stuff at Hobby Lobby. Wrapped it around at the end of a paintbrush. And the first one I did, it was just too long. So I cut it in half and I'm just kind of finagling it. And I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue and kind of push that underneath the twine on the stem. And dropping in this candle, this uh, battery-operated votive candle from the Dollar Tree. And that is it for this one. Can't see exactly how much it's glowing because it was daytime when I filmed this. But um, very simple. It'll be a cute little filler piece on like a shelf or like I have a lot of darker cubby areas that I decorate. So it's nice to have something glowing. For our last one, I'm going to go in with this chalkboard house sign from the Dollar Tree. They have them also with like the whiteboard. And I'm just using some scrapbook paper. I think it was from Hobby Lobby because that's usually where I get it, but it was just in my stash. And I just kind of pressed down around to get the, the general shape and we're gonna cut it out. You saw what I meant. I don't think I really described it well, but you could see I just pushed the paper down and kind of pushed along all the edges to get a crease. And then I'm just trimming it up till I have it so it fits. And then we're gonna paint the frame. I am using plaster from Waverly. I'm gonna paint the whole frame, the edges of it, and then I, I originally was putting a little bit of paint on the edges of the blackboard in case the paper didn't go all the way to the end. And then I was like, well, I don't know if you'll be able to see it through, so I might as well just paint the whole thing. <laughs> so I did paint the whole um, black portion of this. I didn't do like a thick coat. You know, if you were going to be seeing that, I would have probably done two or three coats. But I just did it so that it was all the same. And then I have this wooden leaf cut out from the Dollar Tree and I'm just using some lightweight spackling to fill in the hole and we will um, that's really easy to do just let that dry and then sand it down if you need to and we're going to use some antique wax this time I'm just using a paper towel to wipe it on again baby wipes work really well but I did not have them in my crafting area so I just grabbed a paper towel and then while we let that dry we're going to use a glue stick. I'm using a Gorilla glue stick, but a regular glue stick would probably be fine. We're going to attach our paper to the inside of the sign, and I'm just making sure I get it really, really good along the edges, and then, of course, the whole center as well. And we're just going to lay that in there, and then um, Plaid, which is the Mod Podge company, I don't know how you would word it, it's like the parent company of Mod Podge, but they had sent me some different things and this little scraper tool was one of them and it is really, really handy <laughs> to smooth things out and push things into the corner. So I could have avoided the whole painting the backside of the black part from the beginning because what I ended up doing for any little gaps was just, even though it wasn't super noticeable, I wanted to add this little detail of the twine, plus it would kind of cover up any spot where the paper wasn't all the way to the edge. So I'm just using a little bit of hot glue and some twine and this little it's a dotting tool I think is what it's called it's from crafter square at Dollar Tree but I love it because it's just good at like pushing in the little areas and we're going to glue that all the way around trim it up I use the little, little lighter at the top because it had kind of frayed up at the very top and then we're going to hot glue our leaf down in the center this one is really a very simple DIY. I wanted to put another one of these bows. thought about doing it at the top, but I really kind of just liked it in the center of the leaf, which is a little different, but I don't know. I liked it, so that's what I did. And then I'm going to go in with some antique wax on my stencil brush. Very light dry brushing. I just kind of went over and over until I had the amount that I wanted on because I didn't want to go too heavy at first. I just wanted to kind of build on it. And I love how this little piece came out. Um, it's very cute. 
and I was happy with it. So I hope these DIYs gave you some fun inspiration for fall. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up before you leave. And that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to be sharing some Dollar Tree Plus DIYs with you, starting off with this cute thing that I picked up at the Dollar Tree Plus. It was $3, and we're going to start by doing something without that. We're going to make a little base using some tumbling tower blocks, and I am just going to use some wood glue, gluing them together. Um, just doing, I believe I do six sets of two and I'm just using my ruler to straighten them out and then I will let them dry. Now, if you want to do it faster, feel free to use some hot glue. And I just love working on my little clear cutting mats from the Dollar Tree because it protects my surface, but also lets me slide projects out of the way while they're drying. And so I was going kind of off of the picture on the front. Now I believe, um, well, I'm going to show you the colors, Kelly Green and Harvest Orange from Apple Barrel, uh, but you can use anything you want. Now, I think this piece is supposed to be a tic-tac-toe board. Correct me if I'm wrong. It doesn't say that on there, but I think that's what it's supposed to be. And originally, I was going to take all of the parts and use them for different DIYs, but I kind of like the picture on the front, and I thought it could be a really cute sign. So I'm going to paint the pumpkins orange and let them dry. Then we're going to paint the leaves. I ended up just using the red. I was thought I was going to do red and yellow leaves, but I just did the red and it really only took one coat. The MDF soaks up the paint and kind of makes it dry a little bit more muted, but I liked that. So I only did the one coat and then we're going to use the green paint to paint the stems on our pumpkins. And once again, do whatever colors that you like that fits with your decor. So now we're going to to go back to the tumbling tower blocks and once I had them, um, the glue was dry, I'm going to glue them all together. And I, I'm going to just share this with you because you can see a little bit of the struggle and how I improvised. Um, as I was doing it, I was like, these are, like this one has a huge gap there. Like this is definitely not the same length. So I just continued on with the wood glue and I glued them all together and let them dry. And then I, might, I went in with some lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree and filled in that gap. And then any other spots that seemed to need a little bit of smoothing over, I did. But then, uh, and then I let that dry and then I sanded it. And then as I'm doing this, I had more pieces break off and I was like, oh my gosh, am I not using enough glue? Because usually this glue works great. Um, or am I just not letting it set? Which could be, because I tend to lose my patience, um, when I'm crafting, I want to just keep moving along. So I pulled out my super glue gel and I'm just gluing the, um, the one that came apart back together with that. And then I was like, you know what? I don't want to deal with this anymore. So I flipped it over to what was going to be the bottom and I just put a bunch of super glue gel between all of the seams and hoped for the best. So we're letting that dry. We're going to go back to the sign part and I'm just using some antique wax from Waverly and a damp, paper, uh, damp paintbrush. Had a hard time getting those words out. You could also just water down the antique wax or use it as is, but I was trying to go for a little bit lighter of a look, although it came out darker than I thought, but I ended up liking it in the end. And I'm just brushing it on, wiping it off, and we're just going to do this stain to the whole side, inside all the corners, front and back. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I hope that you consider subscribing to my channel. I do a lot of Dollar Tree DIYs um, or clearance finds, thrift finds, but a lot of Dollar Tree. But either way, it's always budget-friendly and user-friendly. So please consider subscribing before you leave. So once everything was dry, all of my pieces, I'm going to use some super glue gel and glue these each one of these in. Now, I don't know why I didn't use hot glue. I think I thought with the antique wax, the hot glue might not work as fine. But I feel like hot glue would have been a fine option for this. But whatever you want to do, whatever adhesive, tacky glue, wood glue, do what you want. Glue them all down. And I did it obviously very patterned, but you can do a more sporadic if you want. Now, this did leave out one pumpkin that came with the set, and we're going to use that in a later DIY. So once all that glue has set, we are going to attach this to our base. That's why I made the base, because I wasn't thinking it would stand up as great on its own, especially if something got bumped into. So I'm just going to use some Gorilla wood glue and a little bit of hot glue, and we're just going to glue this down to the center. And this just gives a slightly wider base, but I didn't want too wide of a base because I did want this to have a narrow profile. I'll probably style it with stuff in front of it as well, so it'll kind of be like a backdrop on a shelf 
is kind of what I'm thinking. And then I am just going to stain the bottom with some antique wax once again. Now the reason I glued it on first was because I didn't, uh, I know that the, um, I didn't want the glue to have a hard time if I stained the whole thing. So I was like, I'll just stain it after. Um, and it worked out fine because the main piece had the same finish on it. So it didn't matter if I got anything on there. But here's how it came out. Once again, you could do more neutral colors if you wanted, but I do like pops of traditional fall colors in my decor. So I love how this came out. And we're gonna move on to the next one. This piece I picked up at the Dollar Tree was $3 in their Dollar Tree Plus section. And it was so pretty on its own. I didn't want to use it or do anything with it, but I, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to pull out these autumn words from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint this one in black. And um, just to let you know, if you can find those in the Dollar Tree Plus section, they originally I thought they just had the pumpkin and the acorn, but the next time I went in, they had another one. I think it was leaves. Um, and they also had some in like a white wash, I think, or maybe it was a darker finish. I think it was a white wash. But I thought they were so pretty on their own. If I didn't do DIYs, I probably would just like put that on the shelf by itself as is. But I am doing this in a way that I can change it up or take these items off if I want to in the future because it was just so pretty. I didn't want to like make any super permanent changes. So I'm taking this um, like rusty orange um, ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I think it's called like their stitch ribbon. And I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue and I'm wrapping that around the center stem and we'll go across the top as well. I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing, but I'm just finagling it around and gluing as I go. Hot glue typically will peel off um, items fairly easily without ruining them too much. So that's what I'm hoping for. Plus I only put the hot glue in the back. And then I have this cute little bow. This came in a pack from Hobby Lobby and it has a cute button center and I'm gluing that onto the ribbon. And then I have one of these laser cut leaf cutouts from the Dollar Tree and I hot glue that underneath once again onto the ribbon. So we're having as little glue on the piece itself as possible just so that I can do what I want later. But I couldn't bring myself to paint this piece because I loved the color wood. Um, and now we're going to take that same orange ribbon and I'm going to tie up bows on both of the outside pumpkins just to give a little pop of color there. And then we're just going to glue our give thanks to the center of the big pumpkin. I love the dark black contrast with this light wood. I thought it was super pretty. Let me know if you agree. There it is all finished. I just, this is definitely my favorite. Yeah, this is for sure my favorite. Um, but, you know, you do you. You could totally paint the whole thing if you wanted, but I just loved that natural wood. All right, so for our last one, I'm taking this little sign. I picked this up recently at Hobby Lobby. If you wanna check out my haul, I will have that linked for you. This was $6.99 and I got it for 69 cents and I bought a ton of stuff at their 90% off both at Hobby Lobby and Dollar General. And I bought a bunch of things that I will be DIYing with. So I thought this would be a great blank sign for, well, I'm gonna use it as a blank sign for my next DIY. So I'm trying to tape off the border here. Um, I did a decent job, it was, it was all right. Um, and then I'm gonna go in with Plaster by Waverly and I'm gonna start it with a smaller brush along the edges and then um, a bigger one, but we're gonna, Give this multiple coats. It probably took like four or five coats to be perfectly honest. I think I should have sanded it down a little bit um, because the letters did want to just pop through. I don't know if they were like slightly textured or something, um, but nonetheless, I painted it till I was satisfied. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so much. It's just a very simple way to let YouTube know that you're digging what I'm doing. All right, and uh, now we're gonna take that last pumpkin from that first DIY, and I'm just going to paint it. This time I'm using pumpkin from Waverly. Definitely a little bit of a thicker paint, so it comes out a little bit different than the first project. And then I'm gonna go in with Kelly Green for the stem, and I'm just gonna do a very simple coat. This all just took one coat. I didn't, I didn't overdo it here. Really didn't need to. And then I wanted to go in to make some little pumpkin lines with the plaster, and there was way too much paint on my brush and the brush was acting funky and I didn't like it. So I went in with some more pumpkin and just muted that down by adding some more pumpkin color on top. And then I went in again with a true, more true dry brush. Um, and then I also did a little bit of the edges just to make them pop a little bit. And then I went in again with a tiny bit of, of pumpkin 
to just blend it all together. And we're gonna peel off our painter's tape and clean up the edges a little bit. And then I did wanna go in with that plaster on the black. I just didn't want a thick you know, coverage there. So a little bit of dry brushing there just to soften it up a little bit. I didn't want that like stark black in this project. And then I also wanted to add a little bit of orange to the back. Round. So I'm doing a little bit of dry brushing, trying to be careful because if you do too much of that, if the letters weren't fully covered, which I don't know, I just wanted to like pop through. So I just did a little bit of the orange or the pumpkin color, hot glued our pumpkin on. And then I also pulled this little piece that I picked up in a pack from Hobby Lobby and hot glued this little cute truck onto the center of the pumpkin. And I thought this was a really cute thing that like would just be a wonderful shelf sitter filler item for fall. So I hope that you enjoyed these DIYs. If you do, once again, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, make sure your notification bell is turned on, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. For this first DIY, I have this brown sign from the Dollar Tree. This was from their summer uh, selection, but they sell different shape signs for all different seasons. And then I'm gonna use this scrap paper, scrap book paper from the dollar or oh my goodness from Hobby Lobby it comes in a large pack and I bought it when it was 50% off and it has this type of paper but in different shades it's a nice thick cardstock it's really good so I'm just using my glue stick and we are going to go ahead and put a good amount of glue glue on it and we're going to attach this to the front and I did have to piece it together a little bit to get the whole thing covered but I just did my best to match up the lines so that it wasn't super noticeable and it worked pretty good. I do highly recommend this Mod Podge roller. I think it's called like a Brayer, a Briar, Brayer. Um, it is by the company Plaid which sells Mod Podge and it's used for Mod Podging but it's great even when you're just gluing stuff down and it really helps smooth things out, make sure there's no clumps of glue, make sure there's no clumps of Mod Podge, whatever you're using and it's just a really handy tool. So highly recommend that. Um, I thought people were kind of over talking it when I used to, before I had one, like when I would hear people talk about it but it really is handy. And then I'm just going to flip this over and I'm using my little cutting mat. It's a small one from the Dollar Tree, so I have to keep moving my sign. But um, And then a sharp blade and we're just going to trim off the excess. This is a thicker paper. I don't think using um, sandpaper to, to clear off all the edges would work very well. And now I'm just pulling out this Dollar Tree calendar that I picked up this year. And I just went to this fall pumpkin and I'm just going to cut out the pumpkin. We're just going to use that. We're not going to use the rest of it. And I just cut carefully around the stem and it really wasn't too hard. I always get nervous cutting things out like this with detail thinking I'm going to mess it up, but it's really not that bad. <laughs> and then we're just going to glue that down as well. I am using this Gorilla glue stick that I have on hand, but a regular glue stick would be fine. And um, I'm going to just be very careful to smooth it out. Remember, the calendar pages are a little bit thinner, so just be careful with them. And actually, as I'm doing this top part here, I just totally ripped off the top of the stem. But that's okay. We're going to carefully glue it back on and match up the lines, and you won't even be able to tell. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, please consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. I love sharing that kind of stuff with you, and I hope that you stick around. Now, I am going to use some sandpaper and just smooth out the edges um, just to clean up any extra pieces, and it did work. Sandpaper did work fine for that. I just didn't think that it would work for, like, removing the big chunks because this is a thicker paper. And then I'm just using a little pokey tool to... Um, put back the hole that was already in there that I had covered up, and then I'm gonna seal the top with some Mod Podge. Optional, but I most times do this on my projects just because I feel like it seals it better, or it just protects it better. And I'm gonna take some jute twine and I'm gonna glue this around the edge. The edge of the sign was just not totally even, just like the way it came. Um, yes, Dollar Tree signs are usually not perfect, so I just thought this was a nice detail and it kind of finished off the edges, and we're just going to hot glue that all the way around. Now we're going to add on, on just a little bit of embellishment. I have a leaf just pulled off from a pick that I had, and I'm going to hot glue that down along with this little um, raffia bow with a button center. I picked this up in a pack of them from Hobby Lobby in their fall stuff, got it on sale. Um, really cute and I've been enjoying using them. And then I'm just attaching a little string through the hole and tying a knot. You could hang this up or you could just lean it on a shelf, but I love how this came out. I'm gonna probably use mine on a shelf just kind of as a background piece, but I love how this one turned out. I think I said that a couple times. Okay, moving on, we have another calendar DIY. We're gonna use this sign 
once again from Dollar Tree from their Shore Living line, I think, from the summer. And I pulled off the handle and then I'm just scraped off the sand dollar, which I did save. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but I save everything. And then I want to pull off the frame, but I want to be very careful to not damage it. So I'm just using my hair dryer to heat up the glue underneath, sliding my little putty knife around. And once I got it going, it came off pretty easily. We did not um, cause any damage. It's in four separate pieces already. And now I did over, I did very, very much clean off the back side of them by heating it up and scraping off the glue. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I don't know. I got on a roll. And then we I was peeling off the rest of the trim pieces and I was like, oh my goodness, this paper is just coming off. Perfect. So I was able to just scrape it and peel the rest of that off without much effort at all, which gave me a completely blank canvas or complete blank canvas. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I got my words jumbled today. So now I have this other calendar I picked up from Dollar Tree this year and pulled out another picture. These square signs are like the exact size of my of the calendar page. So I was, okay, so this is my thought process on this. The calendar pages are sometimes a little bit thin. Well, they are thin and sometimes you can see the writing through it from the backside. So I wanted to put down a coat of white paint and then I had ripped off the edges a little bit on the bottom and I was like oh you're gonna be able to see it so let me blend in this so you can't tell totally forgetting that I was gonna be putting the frame back on which would cover up that little torn edge so this part here where I'm adding this little dry brush and texture I was trying to match the background of the paper totally unnecessary so skip that just paint it white or cream or something like that is helpful so that you don't see the calendar on the back side showing through once again we're gonna glue this down and I'm just doing like half at a time just to make sure that I can properly smooth it out. I really didn't have a lot of wrinkling this go around. Um, so I think using that little rolling tool helped a lot and taking my time with it because sometimes I rush through my DIYs because I don't have a lot of patience, but I did pretty good this go around. So just get that whole thing glued down and smoothed out. Now, depending on the design or colors that you have, you may or may not want to paint your frame, but I'm going to, so I'm giving it a coat of the paint Burnt Umber, which is by Apple Barrel. And I'm just painting the front and the sides of it because I wanted the sides of the picture just to be totally finished. So we're just going to give that a quick coat of paint and let that dry. I might have done two coats, but I think I only did one. But, you know, you do whatever you need to do to get the look you're going for. And because I'm going to be using the holes that are in the frame, I just wanted to poke those through before I put the frame on so I could make sure I lined up the frame exactly. So once again, I'm just using this little tool. I think it's supposed to be for, like, it's like a Dollar Tree version of Cricut tool, but I don't have a Cricut and I use it all the time in crafting, it's handy. So I was just trying to remember how this frame bit went back on and making sure I lined up the holes because as you can see, the top piece went to one side. So I was like, let me start there and make sure we've got the holes. Um, if you didn't wanna use the holes, you could easily fill them in before you paint them and um, then just don't worry about it. And then I'm just using some hot glue to glue the rest of our frame all the way around. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so very much. And um, little things like that help YouTube know that our videos are doing well and they'll show them to other people as well. So once this was all done, okay, the frame's not perfect. It, it wasn't beforehand, okay? Dollar Tree Science, again, they're imperfect. So I wanted to trim off the bottom and then I realized I needed to take, take off one of the blades and get a fresh blade and that worked a lot easier. So I'm just using my cutting mat and this cutting tool and I'm just going to trim off any excess. Like I said, it just wasn't a perfect fit to begin with. So once I put it all back together, I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. And once again, I'm going to add another one of those little raffia bows. I just decided to put that on the top. Just enjoy that little detail, but totally optional, obviously. And then we're going to put our little beaded hanger back on. I love when the signs have these because um, they have this little plastic piece that I think I show you in a second. But um, you just feed it through and um, then when you flatten it on the back, it stays there. Um, so it's easy to take them on and off and use them on different projects if you want. Uh, but I decided to just place mine back on the sign. And once again, I'm just using this leaning up on, on a shelf of where I'm showing you all these is not where... They finally landed in my home decor, but I, that's how I will be using it. But you could also hang it up. And I love these darker, um, real like fall-like tones. I love the browns and all of that. All right, so I just wanted to give you a couple ideas for how to spruce up some items. I have these little tea lights 
for uh, from the Dollar Tree. They come in a two pack and I'm going to show you in a minute where I wanted to use them. And I was like, these just really look cheap. Sometimes you can't really see them, but in the little holder that I have, you were going to see them. So I'm like, let me try painting them. So I'm using that burnt umber and I'm using a tiny paintbrush because I didn't want to get any paint on the little flame part. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to look horrible. Um, but I painted the top and the sides. It did take three coats to get a really like a good finish and coverage on it. Um, but it came out better than I thought. And so I just wanted to give you guys this idea. Um, don't be afraid to just paint stuff to give it a try. And it really made things look, I don't know, a lot, a lot better. So I have these metal pumpkin pieces. My mom had given these to me years ago. Look at how that candle came out finished and it just blends right in. You can't tell at all. Um, I, I don't know. I just love how that came out. So I wanted to share that with you. I thought that was a really cute idea and really made them look not cheap. And so for this last little thing, I had this vase that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. See how it has this chip here? This was on clearance for like a dollar, but it's huge. So I bought it anyway, and we're just going to take some of the nautical rope from Dollar Tree, which is like the thicker rope. I burned it down just to get rid of all the fuzzy, hairy pieces, and we're going to do some hot glue. And I'm just going to glue this around the rim. And I'm going to actually do it all the way around twice, um, just because, I don't know, I liked how that looked a little bit better. Hot glue is also not really permanent on glass. I mean, it will hold really, really good, but if I really wanted to, I could pull it off and you could always just heat it up with a, a heat gun or a hair dryer to um, melt, soften the glue a little bit and pull it off. But I need to cover up with a chip anyway, but you could totally use just an old vase you might have laying around or something you find at a thrift store or if like for me, this clearance find from Hobby Lobby and um, you can take something like that and still use it and get a really good deal on it. And so I just also wanted to share with you how I chose to style it. You could, I almost put some flowers in here, but um, I took these little fairy lights that are from the Dollar Tree, and then I have a bunch of pine cones. I have some plain ones and some gold ones. They were actually from a friend's wedding many years ago, and I, they used them in their decor, and like we're getting rid of them afterwards, and I was like, I'll take them. And I took quite a few, not all of them, but I took quite a few. And then I also have these pumpkins and acorns. It's like a plastic vase filler or table scatter. My mom gave those to me many years ago, but I have seen some at the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. And um, anyways, I just love this little autumn filled vase and you can't really see the lights glowing as much because it was daylight when I filmed this, but I love this piece here. All right guys, so for this first one, I'm showing you something I made quite a while ago and I'm going to do something on the reverse side. As you can see, this was a Hobby Lobby sign. Um, it was originally $9.99. I probably got it on clearance for definitely under $2. It could have been under a dollar, um, but I don't really pay more than that for something that I'm just going to make over. So I'm just going to use my hair dryer to heat up the adhesive. We're going to get the sticker off. This actually didn't go as great as I thought. I had to really like sand it because the stickiness would just not come off. So anyways, we taped off the edge. We're going to leave the edge gold and going to give this a coat of paint here. And I have a few puzzle pieces from my last one left over and we're going to paint some other ones in some fall colors. So my initial um, idea from this came from something on Pinterest, which wasn't even a tutorial. It was just like an image I saw that I was like, that's really pretty. I want to make it. And then someone in my comments said it would be really pretty to do in like fall colors. And I wrote that down in my notebook for ideas and I just have never done it. So I really wanted to do that. This, so this is kind of a combination. My inspiration initially came from Pinterest and then um, a commenter on one of my videos gave me this idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint these puzzle pieces. This is just one of those little puzzles from Dollar Tree and I've made a few different DIYs <laughs> using these puzzle pieces and I'm just going to paint them different colors of orange. I mixed some brown with the orange 
And then um, I did some brighter orange. The orange, the brighter orange is really the only one that I needed, I think, to do a couple coats of, um, just because it kind of absorbs it and dulls it down a little bit. But dulling it down is not totally bad. I wanted that for some of the colors because I wanted different shades. I didn't want everything to be the same color. And I'm just gonna go in with different shades of red, orange, yellow, and brown. So while my puzzle pieces are drying, as you saw, I did a couple coats of, I don't remember if it was white or plaster, I think it was plaster, and let that fully dry. And then I'm just using a pencil to sketch out a tree. I am not really good at just creating an image from my brain. So I just Googled an image of trees and I am just kind of, I'm not really replicating it, but it helped me when I got stumped of like how I wanted to go with branches. This does not have to be perfect. This is different than my tree from the other side. I wanted a bulkier tree, kind of like an oak tree. Now, this is probably definitely not an oak tree, but that was kind of in my mind what I wanted. And then I'm just gonna go in with a small paintbrush and some brown paint, and I'm going to do our tree. So I kind of did the branches and then I filled it in to try to make it look a little bit more natural. I actually really enjoyed this part. Um, my husband was in um, just on the other side of where I was at um, playing his guitar and I was just enjoying listening to him and singing with him while I painted. <laughs> so I didn't leave the audio in for all of that, but it was a very relaxing thing and I really would like to do more painting. I'm not like super great at it, but I really enjoy it. So I'm just going to do this. I did do part of this in um, like two coats um, just where I thought it needed it, but I also didn't need it to be super solid or super perfect. Um, I wanted it to be more, um, I don't know, I wanted it to feel like somebody had painted it so it wasn't going to be super perfect. And then I'm just going to go in with some hot glue and we're going to hot glue these little puzzle pieces all over and just kind of sporadically and I layered them, just kind of did what I felt. <laughs> um, now I will say, I think I have a picture of it and hopefully I do, I'm gonna put this up. I did find these little leaf pieces from Hobby Lobby. So if you didn't wanna go for the puzzle piece look, you could certainly use something like that and they would be really pretty on this. Um, so just to give you ideas, again, you don't have to do the exact same thing. You can just kind of go in the similar direction. And so yeah, I went over it as best I could to, I didn't wanna cover up the branches completely. I didn't want you to kind of see them peeking through. But I just kept going until I liked the way it looked. If you are enjoying this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you are new. I like doing easy, like very user-friendly, budget-friendly DIYs on this channel. So I'd love it if you would consider subscribing and make sure your notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out on my future videos. I was considering there making some falling leaves, but I didn't like the way it looked. So I did away with that. And that was it for this one. It was a little bit time consuming because there was lots of things to paint, um, but it was really easy to do and super fun. So I was thrilled with how this one came out. Okay, so for this next DIY, I'm just gonna use this little candle holder from Hobby Lobby. No, no I didn't. It's from Dollar Tree, not sure why I said that. And I'm just mixing up the paint to get the color I wanted. First I did try to accent the ridges with the brown paint and then paint over it. I just kept painting till I liked what I, what I had. I'm just mixing up the paint colors until I got what I liked. I was realizing when I was started decorating uh, my home, I was realizing I wanted some more of different colors. So I wanted a little bit more of like a deeper rustic-y red, if that makes sense. You'll see. I Again, I just kept painting until I liked what, what I had in front of me. There's no wrong way to do it, and if you change your mind, just paint it again. So this was definitely more like a rustic -y, a rustic, a rusty, like red or rusty brown. And I am just sealing this in with some Mod Podge just so that it doesn't chip off. I love this little candle holder because it's a nice weighty piece, and there's a few different ones at Dollar Tree that would um, work really well for this project.
Once that's all dry, I'm going to take this little wood stem, a leaf from a pick, and some, I think that's, that's what they call the Spanish moss. I'm not totally sure because it's not in its original packaging. And I'm just going to use some hot glue. These wood stem pieces, if you can find these from Dollar Tree, these are better than the ones they had previously. I shouldn't say better. They're different. They're thicker. They're like bigger. They're wider. Um, and I really, really like them. So I was glad I found them this year. But you could also just use a stick from your yard. Um, and then I'm just trimming down a leaf. This is just a random one from a pick that I had pulled apart. And we're going to glue that in as well. I love how this came out. And it's going to look really nice with my little um, tree sign. They're going to go together on a shelf. All right, guys. So for today's video, we're going to be making some stuff for the front porch for fall. And I started by grabbing these three signs from the Dollar Tree. I got all different ones. They had three different ones. Um, depending on how you want to do it, you could get all of the same if you weren't going to use the words on it. But I wanted to try and use the words while still painting this. So I used my hair dryer, or you can use a heat gun to warm up the glue to get the bow off. And I'm just going to use some lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree to fill in the holes on just one of the pumpkins. And then I'm going to give them each a couple of good coats. I'm going to be using um, moss from Waverly, and then I believe silver lining and pumpkin, and I'm going to show them all to you. But you can, of course, do whatever colors you want. And then I do go in with some brown paint as well and paint up the um, stem just to clean it up and to give it a slightly darker look. But this is, of course, going to be all just for your own taste and colors and whatever it is that you're going for for the, your look. If you're new here, my name is Leanne and I love sharing easy, budget-friendly DIYs with you here on this channel. And I would love it if you would consider subscribing if you have not done so already. If the subscribe button down below the video is still red, then you're not yet subscribed. So make sure you click that button and turn on the notification bell, which is right next to it. And that just makes sure that YouTube, hopefully, they don't always do it, but should let you know when I post a new video. So here I am doing my third one. I tried to pick the colors based on what they already were so that I wouldn't need too many coats of paint, but I did do two coats on each of them, I believe is what I ended up doing. Once I had a couple of good coats and it's all dry, we're going to go in with some antique wax and I'm going to do kind of like a dry brush. I am going to start by emphasizing over the metal words that were on there because I wanted them to pop out and then I'll kind of blend it in a little bit better. So I didn't want it to be, I could have taken them off and painted them separately, but I kind of wanted it to blend in a little bit while still having the words on there. So that's how I chose to do it. I'm just dipping a stencil brush into some antique wax and then dabbing a lot of it off and then we're just going to dry brush. I do go around the edges and then I also go do some of the lines kind of in the shape of a pumpkin to kind of help give it, you know, the curves of a pumpkin. And you can do as more, as much or as little of this as you want. Um, like I said, I started out by just kind of emphasizing the words, um, but you could also take those words off and just, or just flip the signs around and just simply paint them a solid color and have no words or add on your own words. Like if you can't find these particular signs from the Dollar Tree, you can just get the ones that don't have this on it. Um, but I had them and I liked them and I wanted to try to use them and I really did like how this came out. And you'll see some of them, I have it a little bit heavier than others, um, but yeah, just do it to your liking. Once everything is painted and dried, we're gonna start attaching them. Now my front porch gets a lot of sun and it's still very hot by us. So I didn't want to just use hot glue because hot glue will soften as it warms up, obviously. So I'm using wood glue and then I'm also just using a little bit of hot glue just to kind of give it that immediate hold while the wood glue sets because the wood glue has a little bit of, takes a little bit more time to set. Once I got these all attached, I did put some things that were heavy on top of them just to help them really, you know, set. Um, and this is why I did not cover up the holes on all of them because I knew I was going to be slightly overlapping them So I didn't worry about it. I just made sure to do it on the top one And then I wanted to do a little bit of embellishment, but nothing, you know too much So since this was for outdoors, I, not that I don't use raffia indoors But I wanted to kind of go for the straw look and raffia can be you can tie it sometimes But it will also sometimes like um, rip on you. So I just kind of folded the raffia till I had what looked like a bow and then I just used a little bit of hot glue and another piece of raffia and wrapped it around securing it with some glue and that was it and then to attach it 
I first did hot glue and then I remembered, I was like, this is not going to hold in the heat. So I did go in and add a little bit of wood glue. I don't know that that made the most sense, but it's what I had on hand right next to me while I was in the middle of this. So I did that, cleaned up the mess I made. I was a little sloppy, but, and then I just trimmed it up a little bit. And then what I decided to do for this, I wanted to put this on like a steak of some kind and you could buy like a dowel or, um, I don't know, anything you wanted, but I had an old broomstick handle from an old broom that I used in the garage and the broom was messed up and I'd already bought a replacement. So I just used this broom handle, but you could also buy one from the Dollar Tree or whatever you wanted. Um, and I'm just going in with some super glue gel. This kind of was a mess. I don't know if I did it in the best way possible. It's on a completely flat surface, but I knew I wanted something really sturdy to hold it. So I put some super glue gel and then I wanted to, I cut up some ribbon there in the beginning and I wanted to kind of use those to attach over top. So I used a little bit of super glue and then a little bit of hot glue and draped the ribbon over top to just kind of hold it down. Um, it also held it down while it dried. But once again, once I was finished with all of this, I did also put something heavy on top just to secure it down. And I think I did two strips across each pumpkin maybe. Um, just be careful because the hot glue and the super glue will come through that ribbon and then you have hot glue and super glue on your fingers, which is messy. And then I had a flower pot in my garage that I hadn't used in a while and I just had this cheap spray paint and I sprayed it white. It took a little bit of time to get good coverage. It was not a good spray paint, but it got the job done and I didn't have to go out and buy anything. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And then I just took some rocks that we have that I often use on my porch to weight things down to secure this in the bucket and some leaf garland that I had. Um, I do need to, I think, get something. I need to make the bottom here with a little leaf picks look a little bit nicer, but that's just what I had on hand at the moment. And I love how it came out. And it's a nice size, which was what I was going for. I wanted some bigger pieces for my porch. Moving on to the next one, I have seen something like this done. I believe it was Crafts by Caitlin and then also recently by Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. Um, but I had uh, wanted to make this little pumpkin is what we're making and I was going to go to the store and have some woodcut uh, or find some planks from Dollar Tree and neither one of those happened but I went shopping in my dad's garage. <laughs> I went over and said do you have any scrap wood I could have and he had these pieces. They were perfect just the way they were. They were a good size and once again I'm going in with some wood glue and some hot glue and I'm just going to attach all three of these together. All I did with them was a very rough or light to sand, I should say. I didn't mind if they were the wood was still rough and textured. I wanted all the knots and all the stuff to show. I um, just did a light sanding, really just to clean them off because they had been in the garage. Um, and so we're just going to glue all of these. Again, wood glue for the long-term hold and the hot glue just to help me move along a little bit. Now, the one challenge with these, these pieces are not exactly, like, even. Um, so I'm going to... Um, well, you'll see that when we go to do the bottom. For the back here, I just wanted to do a little extra reinforcement, so I pulled these wooden rollers out. They come in a two-pack from the Dollar Tree, and again, using some wood glue and hot glue, and just doing a couple braces across the back of the piece just to help hold everything together a little bit more, because not all of the side, as I put them together, were touching, so I hope that makes sense. The planks were not fully touching all the way down, so I just wanted some extra support going to go in with some pumpkin from Waverly. I was running low on this so I had to pour it out on a plate because I couldn't fit my paintbrush in the bottle and it's getting low. Hopefully I have enough to get me through the rest of my fall DIYs. And I'm going to do a pretty good coat but also like I said not a heavy coat. I'm leaving some gaps in the edges and I'm not you know filling in all the holes and all of that. And we're just going to give this just one coat but once again do it however you want for you know, the look that you are hoping to get. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That simple task there helps me out so much. So then I'm going through this little drawer I have that has a bunch of random pieces that I just save off of projects. And I found a wood piece that I thought was a good size to be my um, stem for the pumpkin. So I'm just going to go in with some antique wax and stain that um, just the sides and the front 
and I, did, I left the bottom blank because I knew you wouldn't be able to see it. And I'm just going to brush some of that on and wipe it off. But you could use, I mean, anything, a scrap piece of wood. That, that's all I did. I just went and found what I had. I was trying to do these DIYs super, super budget friendly, but also have some good size pieces for my porch that could kind of be seen more from a distance. And then I'm going in with an antique wax and we're just going to do a little bit along the edges and I'm kind of trying to, de to define in between the planks and then a little bit on top too, just a little bit of dry brush to, I don't know, age it, rust it, rustic it up. Is that a word? Rustic it, rustic it up, make it more rustic. <laughs> um, and I just went until I had the desired look. And then I had this wood piece. This is from the Dollar Tree, but once again, you could use another scrap piece. And I'm just going to use that for my base. Again, this is not a straight piece of wood, so I just drew with a pencil so that I knew where to attach my glue. We're going to paint the base afterwards because I wasn't sure if it would affect the glue sticking, and I really needed this to be a good, um, a, a, what am I looking for? Good, strong adhesive. I needed it to stick well. So once around, again, we're using wood glue and a little bit of hot glue, and we're going to attach that to the center. And then I still wanted just a little bit more reinforcement because like I said, the bottoms were like wavy. So the whole thing was not touching the base and I really just wanted to help strengthen it. And so I'm going to use some Jenga uh, or tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to use some wood glue. I think that first one I only used wood glue, um, but then I ended up doing wood glue and hot glue on the on two sides of it just to give it a little bit more oomph. I'm not finding good words to describe what I'm doing, but you you get it. You want it to be sturdy. This is going to be outside, and I wanted it to be as sturdy as possible. So far, so good, but it's not been outside very long, <laughs> but I think it, it feels pretty sturdy. So I think this method worked pretty good. And I'm doing the same thing with the wood glue and hot glue, and we're just going to attach the stem. I'm going to do it off to the side just a little bit. Um, I liked it a little bit off-centered. You'll see once my arm gets out of the way. And you may see a lot of mess here. My workstation was a mess because I was really trying to crank out some DIYs and I was not cleaning up in between. So, um, And I'm just going to go around with some antique wax and we're just going to stain the rest of it. Um, do whatever colors you want. As you know, you do you. It's your DIY. It's either at your house or you're the one selling it, whatever it is. I added a little twine bow and this little burlap leaf from the Dollar Tree. It's just on a wire, so I didn't even attach it. I just bent it around. Um, and I love how it came out. I thought it was really cute. Actually, I was really excited with how this one came out. All right, so for this first DIY, I found these acorns at the Dollar Tree. I was so excited to finally find them. I had seen Fabi on um, Arrow's DIY um, do a project with them, and I really wanted to find them, but I couldn't. But then we were in New York visiting family and I hopped into a Dollar Tree and found them and I was very excited. So I do two of these but um, we're going to go in with some plaster paint from Waverly and just give this a good couple of coats and I'm just trying to um, make sure all of the surfaces are covered so I had to kind of let it dry. I did use I think my hair dryer at some point to dry it on a cool setting um, just so I could keep moving with it and did a couple of coats until I had the coverage that I wanted. There you go, using my hair dryer. I haven't used my hair dryer on my hair in many, many years. <laughs> so now it's in my craft supplies. And um, that way I could set it down and continue painting. So I think I might've done, maybe I just did one good coat or maybe I did two coats, but just go until you've got what you're going for. And then I wanted to go in with some Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to do this mainly on the top part. I want to bring out the ridges of the top of the acorn. I'm sure there is a name for that. I'm not sure what it is. But um, I'm just going to give a pretty good coat. I'm trying to be careful at the bottom there um, just so that it doesn't get too much onto the bottom part of the acorn. And then I'm going to wipe it off with a paper towel or kind of Wiping it off, but also I guess you could say like buffing it in. And then you can see as I'm wiping it off, you can see those ridges just kind of come to life. Really, it was digging how this was looking. I really wanted to incorporate some decor items that weren't pumpkins and that weren't just colorful because I have a lot of color for fall, but I also feel, felt like I needed some things to just kind of break that up. And so I'm just going in now with a little bit of um, antique wax, not much on my paintbrush. 
over the bottom part of the acorn just to do a little bit of dry brushing and some texturizing there. And this is how they came out. I absolutely love these and was so excited that I found them and really had fun with this project. All right, first up, I have these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. They are the, I think they're called the carvable pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to give them a couple coats of paint. I'm painting them orange, but I wanted to use pumpkin from Waverly. It's definitely a more muted pumpkin color, muted orange. And I was looking for some larger pumpkins for my porch. And my stuff on the porch um, fades pretty quick because I have a lot of sun on the porch. So I wanted to go inexpensive. Um, but pumpkins are so expensive, generally speaking. So these ones are pretty big. These are like the biggest ones I ever see at the Dollar Tree. But if you don't like the color, you got to color them or paint them. I've heard that they do come in white, but I've actually never seen them in white. Anyways, they're foam. And I am just giving them a couple of coats until it's got the coverage that I want. And I'm just going to pop the stem off and just going to paint that little spot there. Um, if you want, you can paint the stem and just put that back in. But I had something else in mind for my stem, so that's why I'm doing this. And I'm going to cover this with a good coat of Mod Podge because, like I said, I'm going to use these outside. And I don't show you here, but um, what I think I'm going to do, is I actually haven't done it yet, um, is take some wooden skewers and pop those in these and put, so that they're on a stick to attach them to a hay bale on my front porch because I figure... That way they won't blow away because they are pretty light. But um, anyways, and then I'm just taking these wood pieces that I have from the Dollar Tree, I think from last year, and I'm using some wood glue. Um, if you use just wood glue like I did instead of hot glue, you really got to hold it there till it until it dries. Um, so I put something heavy on top. The white on the pumpkins is just because they had the Mod Podge hadn't dried yet. But that's all there was for this, just a quick little flip. And I love how they came out. Obviously, you can paint them any color, but um, super cute. An easy little DIY flip. And then I have this little stake sign, uh, yard stake sign from the Dollar Tree. And the bottom one is the only one that had glitter on it, so I did sand that already. And we're going to go ahead and paint these. So I'm going to do this bottom one in the color pumpkin. I'm going to do the middle one in the color moss from Waverly. And I'm going to do the top one in white. It does take a couple of coats to let, uh, to cover all of those the words. But um, it does happen. You could also pop these off, paint the opposite side, and reattach them. But I wanted to keep it simple and didn't want to have to do that. So we're just going to paint them while on here. I do go up and clean up the stake in the middle because um, I end up getting some paint on it. So I do end up cleaning that up at the end as well. And yeah, just took a couple of coats to get this to a good full coverage. So then I realized that the white one might be too white for the um, stickers that I'm using. So I went over it with Mineral in Waver from Waverly, and I kind of did like a thick dry brushing. I made sure that was there was like really like a lot of paint on the, especially on the center. Um, and then I went over with whatever was remaining and just kind of did the other two signs to kind of rough them up and blend them together. And then just taking some brown acrylic paint. I don't know what color. I just picked one I had, and I'm painting the stake to cover up where I got some paint. I did the whole thing just so that it would, you know, all have the same color. And then I have these white poster stickers from the Dollar Tree. And it does say that they can be colored. I didn't want to try to paint them, uh, but I guess we colored them maybe with colored pencils or something. And I'm using those. Now, I will admit that the letters were made it so that I couldn't put an S on the end of pumpkins and on hay rides, But it didn't bother me enough to scrap the idea. But if it does, obviously you can... Make sure you have letters that it will all fit or, you know, stencil it on or do other ways to get the words. I don't have a Cricut or anything, but that's obviously an option as well. And then we're going to once again go over it with some Mod Podge to help that uh, the sticker stay and to just, you know, give it a little bit of a protective coating. And um, just an easy way to take this steak and kind of make it your own. I'm not showing it to you outside. It's just kind of laying on a table here, but I wanted it to be on a surface that you could at least see it pretty good. But I love how it came out and the colors will coordinate with everything else I've got going on out there. So this last one, I have this other little garden stake from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to pull the stake off. And um, there's actually like a little nail or something, but that came out really easy with my um, wire cutters. 
Same thing with these staples. And I'm gonna leave the back just as is, and we're gonna paint the front with ink from Waverly, and it just took one coat, did a really good coat, and painted the edges. This is a very, very simple DIY, um, but I'm also using things I already had on hand that I had kind of picked up over the summer whenever I would find them. But you could use any round sign that you have. And then I have these metal words. Um, this is from uh, the Dollar Tree that I picked up last year, but I'm sure they're going to have them this year. And I'm using some wood glue and just going to attach that as best I can. Hot glue doesn't ever work super great for me for these, for metal. Um, and then especially because it's going to be outside in the sun, I figured the hot glue might not hold as well. So then I'm going to give this whole thing a coat with Mod Podge. Um, I wanted to just kind of, I don't know, clean up the surface on that and give it a good, I don't know, make it all look the same and make sure I thought it would just help protect the paint. <laughs> So then on the back, I'm taking some wire cutter, wire, some floral wire, and I'm just doubling it up and twisting it together because I want it to be a little bit thicker than what that floral wire was. I always get tongue-tied when I say that floral wire on my videos. And I'm just going to find the middle of it, and we're going to hot glue it. And I, you could use a popsicle stick, or I'm just using one of these wooden domino pieces from Dollar Tree um, because that was it, what I was able to reach the easiest. I'm going to hot glue that down in the middle and kind of bending up the sides so that it's still making sure it's still usable. And I did this rather than attach it to this. This is a little wagon wheel uh, wreath form from Dollar Tree. And I did it this way. This way I can switch it out and I don't have to just use this for fall time. And I can just pull this off and make something else to go over it as well. So I thought this came out really cute and this is going to be really nice leaned up. I didn't lean it up for the picture here because... It casts a lot of shadows, but it's going to look really cute outside. All right, so for our last DIY, I finally found the white styrofoam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I never found the white ones before. So I was just showing you could use puppy paint. I also had this fabric paint um, that I've just had forever, so I just decided I would use it. And I am just going to draw on some little swirls, and then I end up doing some little squiggly lines. You could do whatever you wanted. Um... I just wasn't feeling particularly artistic, but just wanted to add some texture to this pumpkin. Now, if this pumpkin did not have all of the ridges in it, um, I love using like puffy 3D type stickers. Um, not like the paper ones, but the other ones that you could easily paint over um, to add on some texture. But with the ridges, I didn't think that that would really last or they wouldn't hold. They wouldn't, it wouldn't work. So we're just going to do a little bit of designing on this pumpkin. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out so much. It lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my video and it makes them think, well, maybe I should share this video with others because maybe they'll like it too. So little things to help me out. Once that has fully dried, we are going in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. I am getting low of this, but I am going to try and make it last. For the rest of my fall DIYs because I am almost done with my fall DIYs. So I give this probably three coats letting it dry in between um, depending on the type of paint and the color paint is going to depend on you know how much you need. But I wanted to really fill in like the styrofoamy holes. Is that a thing? Styrofoamy holes? Um, so that it didn't look like styrofoam either. Um, so I wasn't just covering the color. I was trying to cover the texture. So here it is after three coats. I did do the bottom. I did all of it. My voice just squeaked. Um, I did do the, the top, but I ended up putting a little bit of, of antique wax on there um, just because I first was going to cut that part out, so that's why I didn't paint it. Um, but we're going to go in with some antique wax, and I'm just doing a like dry brush over kind of in the ridges as well as over the puffy texture just to kind of draw that out. Um, I thought about dry brushing it with some plaster or white, but I went with the antique wax. Again, do whatever color combinations you like for your decor. And then I'm going to take this burlapy lace ribbon kind of thing. It came in like um, three different designs from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to hot glue that around the middle to kind of cover up that seam there. And um, probably using finger protectors would be a good idea because it's just going to go straight through it. But, you know, I was living on the edge today. And I am just hot gluing every once in a while, not like the whole way around 
but I did want to make sure it was, you know, not bowing out. So I just kind of went around and I happened to have just enough of this particular one to fit all the way around and just tried to make a nice seam. This will be the back of the pumpkin, but I still tried to make it a nice clean look. And then we're going to, you can see I put some antique wax on the stem because I decided I wasn't going to cut it off. And I'll explain that in a second. So once again, finger protectors would be a good idea for hot gluing moss down, but you know, I'm just living on the edge, really just trying to move quickly. <laughs> and my hot glue gun was giving me issues. I'm not sure what was up with that, but um, we're just going to hot glue some moss around. And then I started out using this leaf. I ended up pulling this off later and adding in something else, but I figured I'd show it to you because you're going to see it for a little bit. And then I have this um, I think I called in, in my haul, I called this a doorknob. It's obviously not a doorknob. It's a handle, like a drawer pull. Um, and I'm just going to push this in. I picked this up at the Dollar Tree. I did poke a little bit of, hole, of a hole on top of the stem, not because I couldn't push it through, but I was trying to not break it. I decided to not cut that out because I really needed a place for this to adhere to, and I also wanted it to stand up a little bit taller. So that's kind of why I did it this way. You could also paint this if you wanted. Um, a really fun old one with some texture like that wasn't this cr clear look would be really fun. I am looking for those like at thrift stores, some um, door, drawer pulls to keep on hand. And then I ended up using, I think this is boxwood from Walmart, and glued that in. I like that better. So I loved how this came out. I thought it was a fun, different type of pumpkin. Lots of different variations that you can do to personalize it to fit your taste. And if you don't have a drawer pull, you can, of course, just use like a wood stem or a stick or whatever. For this first DIY, by the way, these are all fall DIYs, which is probably in the title, so you already know that. But I've got this little sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I love this style because the back just pops right out. Super easy to make it over. So we are going to take some cardstock that, that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I love this paper. It came in a large package. I bought it when it was 50% off. It's very thick, which means it um, covers really well. If there's any design behind, for some reason my pencil was not working all the way through there. That's why I kept working on it. Um, but also it doesn't wrinkle when you glue it because it's so thick, or at least not very easily. So we're gonna cut some of that out and I'm gonna use Gorilla Glue Stick here and we're going to attach that on. Right now we are going to paint this frame. I am painting it with just a brown paint that I had on hand. It's just an acrylic paint. I did have to do a couple coats, but pretty much by the time I got done with the first coat, it was dry and I could do the second coat. I had actually done something, well, similar but different, I think last year. I'll try to remember to find it and link the video, but using these puzzle pieces. And I was gonna do something again with it this year and then I saw this idea and I was like, this is perfect. So I have a puzzle from the Dollar Tree. The reason it was just in a plastic baggie is because like I said, I did something with these last year and I'm just flipping them over and we're gonna paint the back side of them, which is way smarter than what I did last year. I painted the pattern side and I had to do several coats. So work smarter, not harder. That's what we're doing this time. And I'm using the color pumpkin from um, Chalk Waverly chalk paint and we're gonna make ourselves a little pumpkin We're gonna get all of them painted and you know, you don't really know how many you need until you get going um, I actually ended up doing pretty good with guessing on the number but um, these are gonna paint or um, these are gonna dry really quickly and You're just going to want to paint however many you think you need if you need to go back and make paint some more That's fine. It depends on how big you're making your sign now that my frame is dry I'm going to also go over it and dry brush it with the color mineral from Waverly as well. So now I'm just going to freehand on this piece here with a pencil, kind of the shape of a pumpkin, and then I'm just popping it in the frame to make sure it's gonna all be seen. And we're gonna start gluing on the puzzle pieces. Now I decided to use wood glue here. Um, it dries clear and it doesn't have any of that bulk that like hot glue sometimes does. So you're just going to kind of go in the shape of a pumpkin. And I started by just going around the perimeter of the pumpkin and then filled in the inside and then went back with second and third layers in certain places to just kind of fill in any gaps and give it some nice dimension. So once you have it the way you're happy with, you're done with the pumpkin. I am using this little wood piece as my stem, gluing it on with the wood glue. Um, this is just from this bag that I had from, I think, the Dollar Tree a couple years ago and I had a little piece. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna pop this frame back on just to make sure everything is where it needs to be. Again, with the wood glue, you do need to give it a little time to dry. And then I have this wood 
word. This is from a pack I had from I think last year's Target Dollar Spot. Um, and it does have stickers, but I'm gonna add some wood glue just because it won't be like laying flat and I wanted to make sure it attached well. But Dollar Tree also has some, or you could use some of the wood letters and write whatever word you want on there. And then I'm just gonna make a little bow here, just wrapping it around my fingers and um, just using some twine. And then I am going to, you just wrap it around your fingers, tie it in half. I'm not like a bow person, so this is just an easy way to make a little bit of a little bit of a thicker bow than just like a shoestring bow. And then I use a lighter to burn off any fuzzies. Um, you don't have to do that, but this twine I find to be pretty fuzzy, and I like kind of like the burnt look that it gives the twine anyway, so it works out. And then because my wood glue was out, I just attached this also with the wood glue. And that is it for this one. I think it's super cute. I love, love, love how this came out. And maybe I'll do something like this for Christmas. I'm not sure yet, but I just love the look. It's super fun and yeah, love how this one came out. Moving on to our next one, I've got a frame, a wooden palette from the Dollar Tree, and then I'm using these stickers. These again are also from um, Target from last year. They were only a dollar but um, you can use anything you want for words here. My frame happened to have this little plaque holder thing, so I'm pulling that off and we're gonna fill that in from this, I never remember what this is called. It's not wood filler, but it's something from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and we're gonna start by painting this palette in some white Waverly chalk paint. So while my little palette was drying, I did paint it um, all sides and in between the palettes and I did the back of it um, just to give you that heads up. And then I'm going to stain this with Waverly's Antique Wax. Now the sides of it um, were like just MDF board and so I kind of had to just put that on a little bit thicker but then I was able to wipe it off. The front of it really absorbed it really well. Anyways, I think I edited too much of this footage out because I, or I'm talking too much, I can't keep up with it. I pulled the little prongs out from the back that held in the back of the picture frame and I'm using wood glue to glue on this palette just centering it up and gonna let that dry and then we're gonna add on these letters and these I did check out ahead of time that they were gonna fit. They fit, you know, pretty closely but they do fit just fine. And I didn't fully center them um, vertically because I didn't want the middle of the H or the middle of the E to be over one of the blanks in the palette, like the open slats if that makes sense because I thought it would just disappear. So I raised it up just a little bit and we're just attaching these on and then I decided to do another little twine bow. That's it, I did also, and I don't think I remember to show it, I did hot glue a little tumbling tower block on the back just to help this stand up a little bit easier. And I think I said hot glue, I did not glue it. I used wood glue. Anyways, isn't this super cute? It may even fit on my tiered tray. I'm not sure, my tiered tray is not super big. Maybe I need a second tiered tray. All right, next up I have this little de tabletop decor from Hobby Lobby, it was originally $5.99. I picked it up on clearance, I think for $0.79. Cents. I'm pretty sure it was less than a dollar. But you could also use one of the square signs or tabletop decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I love, though, looking at Hobby Lobby's clearance and just finding these things that I like the shape and size, and they're either less than, same as, or not much more than the cost of one from the Dollar Tree. And um, I've had a few of those lately. Sometimes I score and sometimes I find nothing there. Anyways, we're gonna give all of this a coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Actually, I think I did two coats. And then we're gonna take some painter's tape and we're gonna make some stripes. So I started up at the top and there's my head in the way. My head's always in the way. And then I'm using a piece of painter's tape as well to kind of space out my stripes. And we're just gonna put those down and then we're gonna go ahead and give this a couple coats in the color pumpkin and I do decide to paint the sides and back as well. So when I put the painter's tape down I'm just trimming it off on the edge that way I'm not folding over because I'm going to paint the rest of it orange as well but the white gave everything a good base coat anyway especially because it was so dark it probably would have taken more coats and I really only did the front of this I think with two coats in the pumpkin. I left the other two or the sides and stuff just have a little bit, like not be as thick because the white peeking through was just fine. So there it is, everything's done. And we're gonna um, peel off the tape. I had just a tiny bit of um, bleed through right there, but that's okay, I don't need it to be perfect. In fact, we're going to 
rough it up a little bit by sanding it. And we're gonna, I'm gonna sand it on all sides, but I mainly focus on the front. I just didn't want it to look like super, you know, crisp and pristine because that's not exactly my style. And then we're gonna wipe off all of the orange dust from that. And then I've got these little wood pieces. These are from Dollar Tree at some point. And I'm gonna glue three of them together with wood glue and hot glue. The hot glue holds it together quickly. The wood glue holds it together longer. May or may not have been necessary to include the wood glue here, but I like wood glue. And they're not all even, so I was trying to like attach them in a way that they would still stand flat, because this is gonna be our stem. I just felt like I wanted something thicker than just the one. And we're gonna do the same thing um, to glue this onto the top. And we've got ourselves a little stem. Now I wanted a little bit of detail on this one, so I've got some green floral wire that I'm wrapping around a paintbrush handle uh, just to get some curly cue and then we're going to hot glue that in there and just kind of stretch it to the spot I want it to be. It doesn't have to be perfect because the vines on pumpkins are not perfect and that is why we do rustic and farmhouse style guys. The real reason that that is popular in DIYs is because nothing has to be perfect if you call it rustic and farmhouse. Okay maybe that's my reason. Just kidding. I actually really do like the style but I've got this little lacy ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I just tied a little bow around that and kind of hot glued it on. And that is it for this pumpkin. I love the square shape just to kind of switch things up, not having everything round and, you know, all the same, the stripes and everything just to kind of make things a little different. So our last one is super easy. I've got one of these velvet pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to rip it apart, take off the velvet. We're going to save the stem either for this pumpkin or save it for future pumpkins down the road. And I'm going in with some plaster. I know you can't see it super well here, but I'm gonna give this a couple coats of the plaster, uh, letting it dry in between. And then, let's see, are we ready? Yep, almost. Then once it's all dry, we're gonna go in with some antique wax and I'm using like a stencil brush. Now I'm mainly going in between, like in the ridges. Is that what you call it? The ridges of the pumpkin? And then we're going to wipe it with a paper towel, kind of smudge it and smear it. And it looks better. It, it comes along. It kind of ends up looking like a wood pumpkin, wood pumpkin-ish. Um, and then once I get all of the little grooves done, I go back with whatever's left on my brush and kind of do the in-between parts too, like the outer, outer parts. Not really sure how to describe the parts of a pumpkin. I don't recall that from science class growing up. But you can see what I'm doing and we're gonna just wipe it again with a paper towel. And then I thought about doing something different, but I was like, you know what? I kind of like this, the look of the stem for this pumpkin. So I'm just gluing it. I didn't, didn't know about using hot glue because hot glue would kind of melt the styrofoam, but the wood glue takes longer. Whatever, whatever you do, it's just fine. And see, isn't that kind of cool? I like it, I like it. Different look than all my other pumpkins. That's what I was going for is some variety. So super easy to switch up these Dollar Tree finds. So for the first DIY, I have these two wood tabletop decor pieces from Dollar Tree. And I they came in different colors. I had picked the white ones up a long time ago um, just because I knew they'd be easier to paint. I didn't know what I was gonna do with them, but they are wood, they're heavy pieces, they're nice and substantial. So I'm taking two different types of wood glue. I don't know if that's necessary, but I just was trying out what I have and we're gonna glue them together. And then I decided to just put some painter's tape on them to hold it together while the glue um, cured or you know settled and dried. And that way I could kind of move it out of the way. So I wrapped them with some painter's tape to hold it together and let that set for, I think like 30 minutes is what the bottle says. But you could also just use hot glue if you wanted, but I wanted to use the wood glue. So once that was all dry, we took off the painter's tape and I was like really excited <laughs> because it worked. and Everything was holding together great. So then I just took my sanding block and smoothed it out because this um, decor was definitely a little bit rough on, um, on the surfaces. So I am gonna give this a couple coats in the Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And I started out by just doing the front and I do have to touch up the sides just a little bit, but I was trying to be careful. And I do end up painting the back orange as well. Um, I just don't show that here. We're just taking some white stickers that I had on hand. You can use any stickers you have or stencils or freehand or Cricut, whatever you've got. These stickers are from 
Hobby Lobby and I picked them up on clearance a while ago. I love when I find stickers on clearance there. They're often in the sticker aisle, not the clearance aisle, just a heads up for you. But these stickers were great. They were actually able to be moved as you can see here in just a second. As I'm putting this on, I realized I was not gonna have room for the rest of my phrase. So I moved pumpkins over. And I'm also um, forgetting something here. We're gonna go back and fix that in a minute. You're gonna see, um, sometimes that happens when doing projects, you have a plan and then like you spell words wrong or you miss something. Um, anyways, so I'm going over with some antique wax and we're just dry brushing across the stickers, the front, and I decided to do the edges here. This is where I saw that there was some orange paint that bled under the edges, so I'm gonna just touch that up really quick. You can see here that I painted the back of the sign orange as well. I don't know why I did that. It seems like white would have been a good idea and then I could have made it a double-sided sign for another season. Who knows, whatever. So now I have these wooden stickers left over from I think last year's Target dollar spot. I had a package and I had some leaves and one pumpkin left. So I thought this is perfect um, to use these up on this project. And I'm they have a sticker on them, but I'm just using some wood glue to make sure they get down really good. And I did that to all of them. And then I'm starting to Mod Podge and I was like, uh, there is something missing in this phrase. It's supposed to say autumn leaves and pumpkins, please. So I pulled off that leaf sticker, thankfully it has not fully set, threw on the and sticker, threw a little bit of antique wax over it, and finished Mod Podging. And this is how it came out. I really was excited about this one. Um, and it's nice and substantial. It's pretty long. I would say it's over a foot long. And so I always love when I can make a larger substantial piece from Dollar Tree items. Now this next one is barely a DIY, but I have one of these chalkboard easels. From the Dollar Tree, I've had it for a while and I'm using a chalkboard pen or chalkboard marker, I'm not sure what it's called, from the Dollar Tree. And I just decided to write out fall is in the air. I had messed around a little bit with angles on this paper of my letters and words just to figure out how it was going to, how the pen was going to write and try to mix up the font. And then I'm just putting on one of these little wooden leaves. And that's all I'm doing to this one. Um, I guess if you didn't glue something on, you could change it out. I'm not sure how that's going to work. I may try at some point to take that leaf off and change out the saying in the future, but I thought it was really cute and very simple and just something easy to tuck into some of my existing decor. So that is it for that one. Now for this next one, I have this sign that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I got it on clearance for like 79 cents and I liked the plaid pattern. So we are just going to cover up the center and I decided I'm just going to use some painter's tape to <laughs> assure that I don't get any paint down there uh, because I really like that pattern. And I thought tape, uh, painting over this, this is like a little leather piece, would be a lot easier than taking it off. I was afraid I would ruin the project. So I just did a couple of coats of white Waverly chalk paint. Um, that's all I, yeah, just painted that. And then I have these window clings from the Dollar Tree. I thought these were super cute. These just came in. My store is still getting in new fall stuff and the Christmas stuff all at the same time. So I wanted to cut off the gray perimeter here and I just decided to pull out my paper cutter because I had it and I figured why not. Um, but you could just do that with scissors or you could leave, leave the gray border. But I wanted this to really blend in and maybe not look like it was a decal put on. And because this decal has like a clear background, um, I'm just going to Mod Podge it right on and then we're going to just center it the best we can. And this fit really well. And you really can't see the edges at all when I'm all done with this. The blue writing on this one is glitter. But it wasn't a glitter that really comes off. And it wasn't too much. It's not that I don't like glitter. I don't use a lot of glitter. I'm, I don't mind it more in like Christmas. But anyways, it wasn't a lot of glitter. So if that is an issue for you, don't worry about it. Besides, we're Mod Podging over it to help it stick down, which would seal in any glitter anyway. Take off the painter tape and it was a clean, you know, clean finish there. Nothing leaked. And I thought this was a really cute and easy decor piece. I love how this came out. All right, so for this first DIY, I've got an LED candle from the Dollar Tree. And I just was testing it out to make sure it worked. And it did. To give this a couple of coats in Waverly Chalk Paint, I think I'm using the color 
plaster. So you're going to give that a couple coats and you do want to make sure that it dries well in between. So once both coats are nice and dry, we're going to take a razor and put in kind of like some little squiggle lines. You want to go through the paint to the wax. We're making like the lines and knots on a piece of wood because we're going to make this candle look like a wood candle. So um, you can so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. Um, and then I'm gonna go in with some antique wax. So I ended up just going in and wiping it off with a paper towel, but it looked like, like a birch log. And then just to sure it up and keep everything looking good, I'm giving a, a coat of Mod Podge because I like to Mod Podge everything. And that is it for this DIY. I love how this came out. I may end up doing this on a couple more. Um, I think it's super cute and really it goes for any time of year. It's just a nice little rustic piece. So I thought that was fun. So for this next one, we are doing something that I saw on Crafts by Caitlin. Now, I feel like I may have seen someone else do this. I know I've seen people use this jar before, um, but and maybe I saw someone else do a pumpkin with it. But when I saw Crafts by Caitlin do hers, I was like, really, really wanted to do it. And that's when I wrote it down. So maybe it's been, I'm sure it's been done by many other people, but I've done round glass jars before for pumpkins, but um, I love the texture of this one. And I just recently came across this jar. So I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. So I'm giving this a couple coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And then I'm just using some brown acrylic paint for the lid. I just used whatever brown. I'm trying to um, use up some of the acrylic paint that I already have on hand. Um, so any of them that are getting low, I'm just trying to use them to, you know, keep them, keep my collection cycling through. So I did two coats of this as well. Once again, make sure it's dry thoroughly in between. Otherwise, the paint will peel off of these materials. Um, but I just did, I think, two coats on the lid and three coats on the jar. And that was only because, honestly, my second coat, I did too soon. This right here is my third coat. Um, my second coat, I did too soon, and it was peeling off a little bit. So now I'm going in with some sandpaper and just going to kind of um, rough that up too, just over like all of the texture to get that to peek through. And I did a light sanding on the lid as well, although with that being metal, it came off super quick. So I didn't want to do too heavy there. I think what also would be cute and to bring out the texture would be using the wax from Waverly, but I've actually never used that stuff yet. I've been meaning to pick it up because... I've seen people do a lot of neat projects with it. So one of these days I'll get it and mess around with it. And then once again, going in with some Mod Podge just to seal it in, keep the paint from chipping. I just always do that pretty much. So when Caitlin did hers, she used some wood stems and I have those. But instead I wanted to use this little pumpkin stem that came off of a Dollar Tree pumpkin. I think it was one of their like velvet ones that I did a DIY on that I took this stem off and actually used a wood stem. So I thought I was going to put that here. So I just um, peeled or cut off the little end part there so that it would lay flush and grabbed a leaf from my stash, just scrap from some florals at some point down the road or at some point along the road and hot glued that and then put the stem on top. And this is really cute. I like, like I said, I've done other pumpkin jars and this one's just fun because of the texture and really cute. So that was it for this one. I picked up these foam dice from the Dollar Tree. They came in a two pack, I believe, and I'm gonna give them a couple coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. I started with the black because I just wanted to cover up all of that bright color and even those dots kept peeking through. So I think what I ended up doing was two coats of the black and then two coats of white. Um, but you know, that's going to depend on what colors you're going with and what kind of paint you're using. I just took my time. I didn't rush it. I let it dry in between and, um, I got the overall look I was going for. So to me, it was totally worth it. And you get two for $1.25 instead of like, if you can find the wood blocks, which are kind of hard to find for me, they're only one for $1.25. So I like the idea of using these foam dice. If you are new to my channel, I just wanted to welcome you. Thanks for stopping by. I hope that you consider subscribing before you leave. You just hit that red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell next to it so you don't miss out on my future videos. I like to share budget-friendly DIYs with you that are pretty easy to do. I tend to go towards a little bit more simple farmhouse style, but um, 
I do have a little bit of variety and for the fall and Christmas, I tend to go with more traditional. But of course you can change up the DIYs to fit your own personal style. But um, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and joining my YouTube family. I post a video once a week and then I occasionally will throw a live in there or another video, which I'm hoping to do coming up on this busy crafting season, but we'll see. Once everything was dry, the white paint was dry, we're going to go in with some antique wax and this stencil brush and just do some light dry brushing. I'm trying to make these look like some wood blocks. So we're going to just kind of distress them and I'm going to emphasize on the edges and the corners, but then do a little bit across the whole thing as well. And I start out with lighter amounts and you can always just kind of go over it over and over again until you have you know, the look that you want, um, but it's kind of hard. I mean, technically you could repaint it with the white and, and undo it, so to speak, but I just try to kind of go with light amounts and then build on that as, you know, as I go until I get the look that I'm going for. And it actually worked really, really good. I was very thrilled with how these came out. So for my letters, I'm gonna be using these like foam sticker, alphabet stickers that I picked up on clearance at Hobby Lobby, but you could use a Cricut, you could use stencils, you could use, anything, the wood letters from Dollar Tree, whatever you have. Um, I love looking for this kind of stuff on clearance at Hobby Lobby though, and I often find, um, you know, a good variety. So just a thought for you, if you have a Hobby Lobby nearby, keep your eye out. And I'm just going to give these a couple coats of the color pumpkin from Waverly Chalk Paint, but of course do whatever color you want. I'm going along the sides too to kind of paint over the foam too, just so that you can't see that. Now, as I was getting ready to attach the letters, I decided that I didn't want to use the A, and I had these wood leaf, uh, I think they're like called laser cutouts from the Dollar Tree, and these are not a fall item, but I picked them up with fall in mind. So always keep in mind as you're looking at stuff um, at the Dollar Tree, maybe ways you can use things that they weren't necessarily created for. And then these stickers are um, sticky, but I wanted to add hot glue. So I peeled off the sticker backing and then used some hot glue to attach the letters. And then I'm using some super glue gel on the leaf. Um, and we're just going to attach that. And that's how they came out. You could also stack them vertically. You could attach them. I did not, I thought about it, but I've just left them free. That way I could kind of change them around as I want, you know, as I want to in the future. So for the next DIY, I have this little sign. This is a fall sign from Dollar Tree, but I picked it up last year. I have also seen them for other holidays, and we're just going to give the top part here, the face of it, a couple coats in the color pumpkin. Um, I did try to keep it off of the edges, although this project kind of evolved as I went, um, but I was initially trying to keep the sides free of paint, and I did. this did take a couple of coats to fully cover all of the writing on there, um, but just do, you know, nice even coats, let it dry in between, and keep going until you have the coverage that you have, or have the coverage that you want. And then once that was all done, I'm gonna go in with um, some plaster, the colored plaster, it's a little softer than the white, and I'm using these stencils that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, and then the wooden word that I showed you was, I believe, from a package from the Target Dollar Spot last year, and I had just a couple of them left over. So I kind of like using different items if I can, mixing it up. Once again, you can use stickers or any other like word decals that you have picked up um, at various you know, craft stores or whatever. And um, But I like to kind of mix it up so that there's different textures on an item. So just you know, don't go heavy on the paint, take your time. That is the best way to use these stencils and not have any bleed through. And also when I go for a rustic look, it kind of works because I don't need the lettering to be like super, super solid. But if you want that, you can just go over with some more paint till you have the coverage you want. Um, and then I'm gonna, once again, the wood letter, wood word was a sticker, but I peeled that off and I'm using some super glue gel. Unfortunately, my cap got stuck to the top where the point was, so I couldn't use the, the tip to apply the glue, but I was still able to make it work and just attach that. So then for the top and sides, there was a little bit of paint and I thought I wanna add a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna use some hot glue and attach this ribbon. But then I'm not gonna show you all of it because I ended up changing my mind because I realized that it was a little bit hard to trim off the ribbon and have it like not look frayed and just give me a nice clean edge. Plus the hot glue comes through, although it really didn't look bad. So I ended up ripping off the ribbon and now I'm just going to give it um, a 
coat of paint just to kind of smooth out because the paper came off when I ripped off the ribbon, as you can see. So I'm just gonna give it a coat of pumpkin just to kind of cover that off and give me a nice clean base. And then I'm gonna do what I should have done from the beginning and that was go in with some Mod Podge. So I cut another piece of ribbon and I did have to take my time with this. You need to use a lot of Mod Podge and I'm gonna put it on underneath and over top. And I kind of just, I, again, I sped this up and didn't show you all of it um, because I did take a little bit of time to really get it to dry. So I just took my time. I did use my hair dryer um, on a low setting to kind of help dry it a little bit, not fully, but just to kind of get it to be a little tackier so that as I moved along, it wouldn't keep bubbling up. And I just, as you can see, I'm using plenty of Mod Podge and I am going to just keep going over with my paintbrush as it's drying and with more Mod Podge, just smoothing it out and like pressing it down. I could have just used my fingers, but I figured the paintbrush would work better. And when that dries, the ribbon's going to be nice and hard. So um, it'll be a lot easier to trim. So like I said, just take your time with this and put plenty of Mod Podge, don't be shy. And you just kind of have to keep doing that so that it lays flat and doesn't bubble up. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out so much. Say hello in the comments. All of those little interactions on my videos help let YouTube know that you are enjoying my content and makes them more likely to share my video with other viewers on YouTube. So like I said, you're gonna do that all the way around and let that fully dry. And then I'm just gonna use a sharp blade and my cutting mat and just trim this off and there's no frayed edges because everything is glued all the way to the edges and it gives it a nice clean finish. And that's it for this DIY. I thought this came out really cute. It's kind of simple. It's still got the traditional color of the orange but it's also kind of muted at the same time and I really like it. So for our next one, I'm gonna go with some frames. We're gonna do two, two DIYs using frames and window clings. So my frames I picked up from the thrift store for 99 cents. I think both of them from this one and the next DIY are both from Dollar Tree originally, but I picked them up for 99 cents, which is a great deal since Dollar Tree is now $1.25. And then I picked up or picked out this paper that I had in my stash. You can buy seasonal um, paper at craft stores all year round, which is great. So it, you don't have to wait for you know seasonal stuff to come out if you're trying to get a head start or if you're making gifts or if you are making stuff to sell you can find that stuff early so um, we just cut that paper down to size and then I'm taking these window clings from Dollar General that I picked up last year that I never got to use I thought I could just stick it on the glass but it didn't work um, so I'm just going in with a glue stick just a regular old cheap glue stick and we're gonna glue this onto the paper itself. And I just ended up going on with this one little window cling um, and we're gonna put that back together. And then I loved the white frame. I wanted to keep the frame white, but it just looked a little too, I don't know, stark, a little too harsh next to everything else I had going on inside the frame. So I'm going in lightly with that antique wax once again, just doing some dry brush around to you know, just give it a little bit more depth and dimension and it softened up the look of like the plastic frame. So I really liked how that came out. And this little sign is gonna be cute on my shelves. I'm excited to use this. I thought it came out really nice. And for our last one, we're going to use, like I said, another frame I picked up at the thrift store for 99 cents. I was excited about this one because it's nice and big and we just take everything out of the inside of the frame and I'm going to use a scrap paper. This is from, this is like a thick cardstock from Hobby Lobby. It comes in a large pack with different shades of wood um, plank paper. And I'm going to need two sheets to cover this whole thing. I'm just using the, the inside of the back of the frame. And I'm using a Gorilla, uh, Gorilla glue stick just because I wanted to make sure it was heavy duty enough because this is very thick paper. But a regular glue stick, glue stick might work just fine. And I am using this little roller tool. This is from Plaid, um, which is the same company that sells Mod Podge. They're not expensive. You can buy them online. You can buy them in craft stores. And they did send it to me, but it is, um, it's so, so worth it. You can just smooth it, things out with your hands if you don't have it, um, but it is very, very handy. 
and I just lined them up nice and tight so that you couldn't really see the seam. And then I trimmed it off with scissors, but I couldn't really get a clean enough edge. So I'm going in once again with a sharp blade. That is also from the Dollar Tree, that little cutting tool. And then we are going to, once again, since I already realized it's not going to stick to the glass, we're going to just glue this with a glue stick onto the paper. And I was excited because I had such a big frame. We're going to leave the frame black. I thought that kind of went well with some of the accent on this truck, as well as the lines on the wood grain paper. So I'm going to just kind of keep that going. And we're just going to glue that on, smooth it out, get any um, bubbles out. This is a really good size window cling. And then I'm going to add on the words across the top, along with a few random little leaves that were in the package as well. And I still have window clings left. So for a dollar, I got two projects plus some extra. So really not bad. Don't overlook your Dollar General. If you have them near you, check them out because they often have things that are cheaper than the Dollar Tree. Guys, and that's really it. We're just going to pop that back in the frame and close it up. And this is how this one came out. I love it. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you are new, please consider subscribing. Make sure your notification bell is turned on. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.